Hello! In this video, we will continue our discussion of probability. Last time, we discussed the concept of the random experiment. The first thing that we need to do when we have a random experiment is to list all of its possible outcomes, right? When we do this, we call that list the sample space. So let's say that I roll a die, which is a random experiment. And in this case, the possible outcomes are just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Coming up with this is easy when talking about simple things such as rolling of a die, but real life situations can get a little more complicated. We will talk about those things later on. Also, in the previous video, we discussed how to find probabilities using the concept of relative frequency. However, in some scenarios, especially in games and gambling, we don't really need to do that because we can calculate probabilities in a much easier way when dealing with things such as rolling of a die, tossing of a coin, and so on. The idea behind this is the concept of equally likely outcomes. So let's say I toss a coin and there are two possible outcomes, heads and tails. Both of them are equally likely in the sense that the coin is symmetric. The coin is what we call a fair coin. So the probability of heads, for example, is just 1 out of 2, which equals 0.5. And tails has the same probability. So for example, let's say I roll a die. Again, there are six possible outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, and six, right? That's your sample space, and all of them are equally likely. So the probability of one is just one out of six. In general, if you have equally likely outcomes, then the probability of each of them is just one over n. So the probability of each outcome is just one over the total number of possible outcomes. And for example, let's say I roll a die and I ask you, What's the probability of it landing on an even number? Now, an even number in this case is 2, 4, or 6. So what is the probability that I observe one of those three numbers? They are equally likely, and there are three outcomes here that I am interested in, and the total number of outcomes is 6, right? So the probability of observing an even number when rolling a die is 3 out of 6, or 1 over 2. So we can also generalize this and say that whenever I have equally likely outcomes, the probability of event A is the total number of outcomes in event A divided by the total number of possible outcomes. So we can solve these kinds of problems by using this formula. First, write the sample space with all possible outcomes. Then, to find the probability of event A, simply count how many outcomes are in event A and divide that by the total number of possible outcomes. Let's look at an American roulette wheel. It works by being spun while the ball is spun in the opposite direction, landing in one of 38 numbered pockets on the wheel. It is completely symmetric in the sense that all of the pockets are equally likely to be the winner. The numbers of the pockets are 1 through 36, and then there is a 0 and a double zero. If you bet that the ball will land on an even number, what is the probability of you winning? To solve this, first count how many outcomes would result in you winning. In this case, there would be 18. And then the total number of possible outcomes is of course 38, so your probability of winning is 18 over 38, which is about 47%. So just to make sure that we understand the concept, let's look at another example. Say I roll a die twice and add the two observed numbers. What is the probability of getting a sum of 8? You can use the two steps we talked about before. First, write the sample space and then use the simple formula to figure this out. If I roll a die twice, what are the possible numbers that I can observe? So you have two numbers A and B. A could be any number between 1 and 6 and B could also be any number between 1 and 6. Here, while writing all the possible outcomes, you could say that you could get 1 and 1, you could get 1 and 2 and so on. So the first number could be 1 and the second number could be any number between 1 and 6. Or the first number could be 2 and the second number could be any number between 1 and 6 and so on. If you count them all, once you have listed all of them, there are 36 possible outcomes. Remember that our question is, what's the probability of getting a sum of 8? So when do I observe 8? I observe 8 when I get 2 and 6, 3 and 5, 4 and 4, 5 and 3, and finally 6 and 2. So a total of 5 outcomes give me a sum of 8. So we say that the probability of 8 is 5 over 36. Now some people make a mistake here because they don't distinguish between the first die and the second die. For example, 1 and 2 is different from 2 and 1. 
so you need to count them differently when solving the problem. Another possible mistake is that sometimes people say, okay, if I roll a die twice, what are the possible outcomes? One and one is two, one and two is three, all the way up to six and six is twelve. So they would think there are only eleven outcomes and eight is just one of these numbers. So they think the probability is one out of eleven, so one over eleven, which is incorrect. This is incorrect because these outcomes are not equally likely. Think about it. Two can only be observed if you happen to roll one and one, right? So the probability of observing two is very small, just one out of thirty-six. But there are five possible ways of getting a sum of eight, so it is more likely to observe eight than two. Note that when we roll a die twice and add the numbers, we are going to have to list a lot of possible outcomes and then count them, which is a little tedious. In fact, if you make the experiment more complicated, it could quickly become impossible to write down all the possible outcomes. So what do we do about such things? If you think about it, when we are finding the probability of event A, we need to count the number of outcomes in A and divide it by the total number of possible outcomes. So basically, this is just a counting problem. And there are clever ways of counting things without really actually counting them one by one. We don't go into various counting methods in this course, but if you are interested in them, you can learn about these things at probabilitycourse.com, which is a free textbook containing examples of these concepts as well as more video lectures. To summarize, if you have a scenario like these ones with equally likely outcomes, then you simply follow these two steps. Write the sample space of all the possible outcomes, and then when you want to find the probability of an event, count how many outcomes are in that event and divide that number by the total number of possible outcomes. Thank you for watching.